let's paint a breathtaking scene of an open field at sunset. In this painting, we're gonna be using some beautiful blues and purples in the sky, as well as some beautiful hushed green tones in the field below. We're gonna be building off of our skills that we've learned in our previous paintings. Click the link above my head to be taken to the very first one. But we're also gonna be growing our skills in mixing paints, blending paints on the paper, and also underpainting. Let's go, you guys. So I mentioned we're gonna be mixing our colors. Here are our muted greens, our cool browns, and our dark greens. These are the paints that we're gonna be using. I have a list of them down in the description, so don't worry, you don't have to pause it. Here we're gonna do wet on wet. Wet almost half of the paper, not until it's sopping, just glossy. And then this is ultramarine on the top. We're making arches of color. Next will be our purple, which I made with alizarin crimson and ultramarine, and here's cadmium yellow. Then we're going to come in and blend these colors, and I do that by adding more of each color and blending them into each other. The water will dry and it will diffuse itself. Here is our first removal with a paper towel. I'm making these organic lines which are all going in the same diagonal direction, just with the edge of my paper towel. And I'm making sure they're not straight lines. Some places they're kind of bunched up. You do, with natural things, you want them to try to look as random and irregular as possible within reason. You want it to be beautiful, but also random looking at the same time. So notice I don't go very far into the yellow at all. I'm gonna be leaving that mostly free except for the sun. Now this yellow is a bit of underpainting because here we're coming in with cadmium red and we're gonna be painting everywhere yellow except for where we want our sun. You can make a little circle. Yours can be more in the middle. I kind of regretted where I put mine and you'll see when I remove paint later, I kind of adjust it over just a little bit, but this is all still wet and so it's all gonna blend in really well. I'm just coming in and darkening that cadmium red again and I am putting that up into the purple so that it can also blend when it dries. Here I'm coming in with some Prussian blue and I'm going to be darkening up that blue. It's all still wet, it's all shiny is what I mean by that, and so that means I can still work on it and it's not gonna create any strange cauliflower effects in my paint. So I'm adding more blue and I'm especially concentrating on the top side of the clouds to give it that sense of shadow away from the sun. Try to imagine rays coming out from the sun and that's where it's gonna be the brightest. Here I'm coming in with more purple just every color that I added before, I'm putting more in because we know watercolor is going to dry in a lighter shade than what we have already. Now I wanted my sun to be a little bit brighter than what it was, so I just decided to remove paint. Removed a little too much here, but I just fixed it with a little cadmium red. And I actually went in with yellow while everything was still wet. Now that was a little bit risky because it is gonna diffuse itself and be kind of blurry. You could wait until it dries if you want it to be more of a clear yellow. Now here's our first real underpainting. We're gonna be painting yellow, cadmium yellow, and viridian. And the yellow is where the sun would be touching, and the greens, the viridians, are on the edges, the outer edges where the sun wouldn't quite be getting to it. And this is gonna build up the color of our greens. There's so much yellow in watercolor greens that most people don't know. Now we're going to be doing a wet on dry effect. First I'm coming in with ultramarine and just darkening, making it more vibrant. I'll come in again with my purple after that on dry paper, but it's because it's gonna touch the blue paint, that part is gonna be wet on wet and it will blend nicely. Here I'm coming in with alizarin crimson to blend the purple into the brighter red, which is gonna be the cadmium red. And all of this is added in pretty quick succession. That's why sometimes you wanna have your paints ready beforehand so that nothing is too dry by the time you add the next color. I also added some alizarin crimson to bring some shadows up into these clouds, reflecting some of the beautiful sunset lights in the sky. Once this is all dry, you are ready to start using your mixed colors, which is gonna be yellow ochre and viridian to make this muted light green. And that's gonna go over most of this grass, most of our underpainting, in a wet on dry technique that we are using. Make sure your paint isn't too dark because you do wanna be able to see the color underneath as well. 
I'm coming in with just a little bit of cadmium red to give it that subdued evening glow and blending it into the sides. And if I add just a little bit more viridian to my muted green color, I can make these dappled horizontal shapes that give the illusion of rows of grass or crop. And here we're doing some dry brush removal. This is all still wet so I can go in with my skinny brush and create these blades of grass or whatever kind of crop you want it to be. Next we are going to be mixing our cool brown color which we're going to be making with viridian and burnt umber. And these organic shapes I'm making back here are trees. Here's a barn and more trees but spaced right under the sun. And these shapes are going to be giving the impression of trees in the background. Here's some more cadmium yellow which I'm adding all around to give it this glowing color and also in the grass. You can see I added some cadmium red to that as well. Next come our muted green colors, but a little bit darker this time, more green to make these vertical blades of grass. And a tip for making things look like they have depth and they're in the distance, smaller in the back, bigger in the front. And as we get bigger, these are actually gonna become taller because the perspective of this is someone who is low down to the ground. We're going to be using that same cool brown color again, but this time with a little more green. This is going to be more towards the front that our colors are going to get darker and darker the further they get away from the sun. Here we're going to add even more brown to the same shade and we're adding these details. Do you see on the heads of these, there are these, all I'm doing is bumping my paintbrush to make these little heads on the top. And I'm coming in with more Prussian blue to add some darkness to the sky to show how late it's getting in the evening. Now with this very dark green with black and brown in it, I'm doing the same thing I just did, but I'm making it seem closer by making it taller and also making the stalks, the little heads on them, making them come down lower on the blades to make them look as if they're getting bigger. And I'm trying to make it look random and full and going all sorts of different directions. You'll see I also come back in here to try to make the other layers more full and so I go back with those older colors like right here. And I just wanted my rows to look a little thicker, a little bit lusher, but you can actually just leave it if you want to and not create these extra blades of grass. I do have my stalks kind of pointed towards the sun because plants have a habit of doing that. They angle themselves toward the sun. Um, but these are all very simple shapes and you can do this and just have fun with your blades of grass. They don't need to be perfectly straight or anything like that. This is a very important step. If you bought the white gouache paint, we're coming in with our highlights. You don't have to have them, but they sure do create a great effect. What I'm doing is on the side where the sun is, on these very first, very front close blades of grass, I'm making little dappled dots on the heads and then on some of the stalks, I'm making white lines on that inner edge of the stalk or the blade of grass. I do do that also with the row that came before that with some of them, but not many um, because you don't have to be as detailed as you're going further back. But this is just giving these stalks this sense of being kissed by the last rays of the sun and it creates this really beautiful effect on such dark stalks. Once this dries I do go over it in just some places with a little bit of yellow as kind of blending into the grass stalks. With this cool brown I'm coming in and adding some shadows and these are shapes that they're pointed when they go into the grass. So they're just creating the sense of depth and shadow in this grass so that it looks just a little bit fuller and thicker. Now this painting is done. I signed it and I'm just carefully taking the tape off. I hope that you guys really enjoyed this project. Please let me know if you have any questions at all. I'd be so happy to help you. I am proud of you for getting through this and learning, committing to learning this new skill. And maybe you'll be able to give it to a friend or a loved one when you're done. You can see all the really beautiful colors that dried into this to create our full painting. If this video blessed you, please give it a like. It really helps support our channel. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications if you want to come on future creative adventures with us. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. Be so blessed.